Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll see how to filter data on a control depending on another. Let's start by reducing the size of our products table. Now, we drag a combo box from the toolbar and we'll call it combo families. We switch to the content tab and we can see that we can fill the control with a database table. Let's select the families table and we'll display column name. But when retrieving the value from the combo, we want Calypso to return the family code, so let's select column code. We save, we adjust its size and position. Same thing for products table. And before we forget, let's call the refresh control for this combo. Remember that no control gets filled without the refresh control action. We don't want to refresh table products in the opening of the form, so let's instead refresh combo families. Ok, now it's time to make the table control dependent of the combo. Let's open its properties, switch to the content tab, and pay attention to the filter. Here we can set conditions, just like in SQL, to filter the data that it's displayed. We can open the assistant to make it easier. So all we want is to display the records where column family is equal to the value selected on the combo. Therefore, we get a, a condition as in regular SQL, but without having to worry about single quotes. This means we can add more conditions or even use functions like left, to trim, or whatever. All of this because we are using Calypso syntax. Press OK and then save. Now that our control depends on the combo, it's time to refresh the table each time the value selected on the combo changes. This means we need to go to the actions of the combo. We can do it by pressing it F2 and create a refresh control action in the selection change event. So we want to refresh the table. So whenever the selection changes on the combo, we refresh the table. I'm going to collapse and all set. It's time to test our application. No need for me to generate any data file. It's already there from a previous test in the previous tutorial. Products. And as you can see, the combo starts empty. But, if we select one of the items, it refreshes the table. Going back to the designer. So, to select an element in a multi-record control, we use the set selection action. So, we want to select it in the combo families by index the first item. I mean, we want to select the first item of the combo when the form opens. So, let's go to the form properties, actions, and after the refresh, set selection. So, again, we want to select combo families by index the first item. The problem we have now is that the action itself won't trigger the selection change event. So we need it to trigger uh, by ourselves by action. Remember that we refresh the table in the selection change event of the combo. So to do it so, we're going to call execute event. And we select the combo. 
and specify the selection change event and press save. So now we are saying to Calypso, look, select the first item and please trigger the selection change event. Save and test. Products. And as you can see, the combo now displays the first item and the table, the products belonging to the selected family. So I would say that the only thing missing now is a way to display all the products at once. Luckily for us, that's a very that's very easy to achieve with Calypso. In the properties of the combo, content tab, we see that we can combine predefined options with the data com coming from the database table. So all we need is to add one. Let's set is value to display something like all. And the tricky part is what to set for the return is value. We now want to be able to display all the records when the user selects this option. So we can set it just to any value because it could be a possible family code. We could set it to empty, but that wouldn't help us much with the filter we're doing in the table control. But if we think in terms of SQL, what we really want is to have a filter that sometimes actually filters the data and others returns all the records. That can be accomplished using the percentile wildcard chart. So let's set our, val our return value to percentile and indicate that it should appear at the beginning of the combo and save. So if the user selects the first option, we'll have a query with a filter looking something like this. So something where family equals percentile. Of course, this won't work unless we switch the equals for a like operator. So let's do that in our project. Go to the table, content, and instead of an equal, let makes, let's make a like problem. Let's try the application again. Products. And as you can see, the combo now displays all the products when the first item is selected and the ones belonging to each family when we select a specific family. Finally, we can complement the filter property also with an order by property, for instance, to order by the families alphabetically. So let's exit, go to our combo, this time content, and we don't want to filter any family, but we do want to order by name, which is the displayed column. That's all you need. So another test, products. And now we can see the families ordered by name. Congratulations, you've concluded the tutorial about creating dependent controls. See you on the next one.